Hey guys, what's going on? Jake here, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about Final Fantasy's influence in Kingdom Hearts. So one could ask, Jake, why does this matter? What relevance does this have in today's society? How are you benefiting yourself as a person? And why do we care about Final Fantasy's influence in Kingdom Hearts and how Kingdom Hearts has been influenced by Final Fantasy? And I'll tell you, the idea popped in my head five minutes ago, so here we are. There's really no context. Um, that being said, however, I, I, I really do think that this uh, topic does have some weight behind it, I guess, if you want to you know, say it like that. Um, I, I do want to point out, though, like, as of the recording of this video, this is April 6th, 7th, um, depending on where you live. <laughs> so, um, as of the recording of this video, we haven't seen anything uh, Final Fantasy related for Kingdom Hearts 3 being shown off yet. And so a lot of people are kind of speculating what's the deal with Final Fantasy, although that I, that mindset is kind of on the back burner. Um, when Kingdom Hearts 3 was first, you know, getting trailers and stuff, that's what everybody was thinking about. Um, now it's more so what's the deal with the organization, what more Disney worlds are we getting, yada yada yada. Um, but so yeah, Square Enix are not, no, excuse me, Final Fantasy has kind of been on the back burner for, um, uh, uh, I guess, Kingdom Hearts 3's advertisement. So. I kind of want to shed some light on that and not only talk about uh, Final Fantasy's, I guess, influence on Kingdom Hearts 3, but on future titles as well, um, past the Dark Seeker saga, and uh, so on and so forth. So to do so, however, I would like to kind of, you know, look at what Final Fantasy has done in the Kingdom Hearts series. So to begin, basically all of the Final Fantasy characters that have been in Kingdom Hearts are just supporting characters. Um, I think the most interaction you get with them is in Kingdom Hearts 2, when you actually have a Final Fantasy character on your team, like as an ally, being Oren, or Oron, however you pronounce his name. Um, I'm not necessarily sure what Final Fantasy game he's from. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it was... Uh, I want to say 11, but I think 10 is... is <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Yeah, let's go with 10. So, um, that that's... Oren, or Oron, however you pronounce his name, uh, essentially is is as close to, I guess, direct involvement with a Final Fantasy character that we've ever gotten. Um, aside from just, you know, Leon and uh, Cloud and whatnot, uh, fighting them in the Colosseum and, you know, having them being supporting characters. Um, but it is really cool because some of their story arcs from their original games do kind of cross over into Kingdom Hearts. For example, the whole Cloud versus Sephiroth thing from Final Fantasy VII into Advent Children and into whatever other uh, Crisis Core, I think, although kinda, not really, because that's more focused on Zack. Um, but that kind of does bleed into Kingdom Hearts too, with them stating that Sephiroth is actually um, Cloud's nobody, and then uh, they and then they <laughs> they have the fight scene where they teleport into a different uh, world or whatever, which I think is really cool because it kind of sets the bar for for if they ever return. Um, but up until this point, uh, we've basically only gotten Final Fantasy characters as supporting roles. Uh, but if, if you look at Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance, we didn't, I, I don't believe we got a single Final Fantasy character in that game. It was just, uh, it was just the world ends with you. And, and I mean, the, the best that they did was kind of just set up the bar for a tutorial basically for Traverse Town, which was really cool uh, seeing Traverse Town coming back um, in Dream Drop Distance. But, and and then there's the whole uh, thing about Neku telling Sora to visit them in Shibuya. So people were speculating for a little bit that Shibuya could be a world in Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, but I'm, I'm j just the fact that the world ends with you I had influence in Dream Drop Distance makes me wonder if Kingdom Hearts is essentially not, I guess, restricted to the Final Fantasy and Disney formula because, uh, again, Dream Drop Distance didn't have a Final Fantasy character to my knowledge, and it only had uh, The World Ends With You. So maybe um, in, you know, going forward into Kingdom Hearts and uh, maybe possibly into Kingdom Hearts 3, we may not get um, nearly as many Final Fantasy characters and could get characters from other uh, Square Enix IPs or franchises, which personally I think would be really, really neat and cool. Um, but I, I, I guess a lot of what a lot of people are wondering is kind of what's what's the deal with Kingdom Hearts 3? You know, how are Final Fantasy characters or another Square Enix IP 
going to influence Kingdom Hearts 3, uh, be it through a tutorial, through a world, things like that. Um, what, what characters have we seen that may come back into Kingdom Hearts 3? Uh, and then obviously the, the question is still there for future titles and whatnot. Personally, I think that we may get, um, you know, Squall, or yeah, Squall, Squall, Yuffie, Aerith, um, just them coming back, just kind of because they've been staples um, ever since the, the first game. Um, as for Cloud and Tifa, that's a bit of a hard one, because if they bring back Cloud, then they're pretty much going to have to bring back Sephiroth due to the whole battle thing. Um, and Sephiroth has been the, the quote-unquote secret boss of the series um, in both Kingdom Hearts 1 and Kingdom Hearts 2, so seeing him come back to fulfill that role um, would be nothing but satisfactory. Um, and then obviously you'd have Cloud in there for, uh, j for, for lore reasons, just for the representative, things like that. Um, so then I guess they could bring Tifa back on that note since they had her for Kingdom Hearts 2, even though she didn't have that big of a role, I guess. Because Squall, Yuffie, and Aerith kind of have a big role, you know, managing Hollow Bastion or Radiant Garden, whatever you want to call it. Um, whereas Tifa was just making sure that Cloud was in line. And then once, once Cloud left, you know, <laughs> Tifa didn't really have anything else going on for her. So uh, what, you know, going forward, specifically in Kingdom Hearts 3, um, are we going to be getting? Uh, again, I think Squall, Yuffie, and Aerith are pretty much a definite. Um, if they bring back Cloud, then they're going to have to bring back uh, Sephiroth for sure. And S Sephiroth being a final, or not a final boss, a secret boss, is more than likely going to happen. Tifa, I don't necessarily think is coming back, but I wouldn't be shocked if they did bring her back. Um, a lot of people have talked about Noctis, or, you know, Lightning, from 13 and, or from 15 and 13, respectively. Um, I think that, I think, I, if anything, I think Noctis is more likely, um, to be thrown in with Hollow Bastion and stuff. Um, primarily because in Hollow Bastion, we know that there's some sort of, not monarchy, but there is some sort of, like, a well-established sense of nobility. Um, for example, I mean, we have Ansem the Wise, and he was this pronounced scientist, and he had a whole castle dedicated to him in Hollow Bastion, or, you know, Radiant Garden. So, uh, clearly, a lot of people in Radiant Garden, um, you know, looked up to Ansem, and that's kind of, you know, and, and then he made a living. So, there's, it, it's not necessarily like a monarchy, but, you know, he's, he's infamous for his work. So I guess they could incorporate, you know, like royalty into into that somehow with Noctis and uh, and uh, the Lus the Lucis Kylum uh, family. I think that's what it is. Um, as for Lightning, I feel like if Lightning were to be introduced into Kingdom Hearts, um, they would kind of do her through the whole Olympus thing, similar to how they do Cloud. Um, from what I've played of Final Fantasy VII and XIII, Lightning seems a lot more emo than Cloud does, which is really weird because Kingdom Hearts has painted Cloud to be this really emo character, but if you play his root game, he's not that depressing. I mean, sure, he likes to keep to himself, but, you know, he, he I mean, he cross-dresses for, for Pete's sake. I mean, now, again, I haven't played uh, 13 or the entire tri trilogy all the way through. I never even got past the first boss in the first game. Uh, but still, I mean, just, just from the first 20-30 minutes of, of Final Fantasy XIII, Lightning does have this kind of more emo, uh, no one talk to me or I'll rip out your throat kind of sensibility to her that Cloud doesn't have in Final Fantasy VII, at least from my perspective, um, from playing 75-80% of that game. Uh, so, uh, I think for Kingdom Hearts III, I think we may get possibly a new Final Fantasy character. Um, hopefully we get, uh, you know, Noctis and Lightning, but I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if they brought back some uh, some older Final Fantasy characters that weren't, uh, I guess, staples in all of these Kingdom Hearts games. I mean, uh, we got Waka, Selfie, and Titus um, from Kingdom Hearts 1. Only Selfie was was, vis was visible in Kingdom Hearts 2, and she didn't look too different aside from, you know, wearing a school uniform. Um, and then we have the... I can't remember their names. The girls from 10-2... They were in Kingdom Hearts 2 as little pixie fairies. Um, so, you know, seeing them kind of come back into Kingdom Hearts 3 would would be cool, but not required. 
Um, specifically though, Tidus, Waka, and Selfie would be really cool to see come back in Kingdom Hearts 3. Not necessarily as like a supporting role, but maybe if they somehow wound up in Traverse Town, or if they, you know, came in Hollow Bastion 2, and just played that side supporting role with Leon and uh, Aerith and Yuffie. Um, or maybe if they incorporated uh, those three characters more into like Destiny Islands, and you know, if we get a really sick opening cutscene or a really satisfying ending cutscene um, that has the three of them. But uh, I, I do really think that that Final Fantasy could, I guess, dip its toes more into Kingdom Hearts, specifically Kingdom Hearts 3, because be, again, we've seen nothing Final Fantasy related um, in Kingdom Hearts 3, at least in all the contents or trailers that we've been getting. Um, so it, it would just really be cool to kind of have those Final Fantasy characters influence Kingdom Hearts 3 a little bit. As for future titles, um, what they could do is just kind of hold off Final Fantasy for now and then release, you know, release Noctis and Lightning and whatnot as staple support characters for future Kingdom Hearts sagas, kind of like how Leon and Yuffie and Tifa are. Uh, but I guess what they also could do is bring back The World Ends With You for either Kingdom Hearts 3 or future titles and uh, other Square IPs. And I mean, I don't know every single Square IP, so that's just kind of up for uh, speculation. But, uh, so that's basically just what I think about, you know, uh, Final Fantasy's influence on Kingdom Hearts. So, I don't know if I said this at the beginning or not, but I didn't have a script for this, so m the majority of this was kind of me rambling, so as, as that's kind of made clear uh, with some of my videos. But anyway, uh, thank you all for watching. This is Jake, logging out. Peace.